today we are talking about syphilis and uh, if you are sexually active this is one of those videos i usually tell you need to watch all the way up to the end because uh, syphilis is one of those nightmares when it comes to the treatment it's an sti std we defined stds and stis and um it's usually caused by a bacteria that we call Treponema pallidum and it usually has four stages and this is what usually make it so much of a nightmare when it comes to the treatment. It's a bacterial infection like we mentioned meaning that we have drugs that can cure this infection but then you'll have to catch it during the right time early enough because it becomes a little bit more complicated later. It comes with complications like um, gammas which is now masses of dead or swollen fiber-like tissue that can be in the brain, that can be in the heart, skin, bones, eyes, testes, and um, further complications can result to miscarriage, stillbirths, blindness, hearing loss, and brain damage, among others like you're going to see. Transmission is through direct contact with the chunkers of the source, and this source tend to develop around the mouth when you have this infection, around the mouth, the penis, the vagina, the anus, around the areas where you have mucosa. Now, syphilis is primarily transmitted sexually. This means you can be able to contact it through oral, anal, vaginal sex, or direct genital to genital contact. And uh, if you can create a barrier between those, you can be able to prevent yourself from getting this or acquiring this. But treatment is the best. So if you treat the person, it becomes even easier for you. Now, babies usually get congenital syphilis through bath when they're going through the birth canal, that's why they're going to get syphilis. Blood transfusion, although this is very rare, just because uh, every time you donate that blood, it usually go through screening, and one of the tests is syphilis, so it's very rare, unless there was something that was very, very wrong during the whole procedure. Now, contrary to the myth, it's usually very unlikely for you to catch this uh, infection from the toilet, but... Um, it's very important for you to always observe hygiene, especially when you're using public toilets. So it's, it's not something that we can just rubbish off. But chances are very low for you to contact the syphilis from uh, just going and sitting on a toilet. Now, although when you sit on a toilet, which is being used by the public, we have so many other skin conditions that you can acquire. We have fungal and others. So it's very important for you to always make sure you sanitize the seat before you use it. Now, we have several stages. There are actually four, not several. There are four. And we have the primary, secondary, ratent, and we have tertiary. And by the way, I'm a kikuyu, so every time I use R instead of R, just pick the right one and place it there. Away from that, um, safe race is the most infectious during the first two stages, during the primary and secondary, like you're going to see. And when safe race is in the hidden or latent form, this is the bad stage, the disease remains active, but it doesn't cause any symptoms. You're not, going, you're not going to have any symptoms, so you're not going to have the sores around the mouth, around your vaginal canal, anywhere, so you're not going to have any of those symptoms, but it's still there, and you can still be able to transmit it. Uh, and during the tertiary uh, phase of this syphilis, this is the most destructive to your body. This is where you're going to find the complications, some of which you mentioned, and we're going to come to them later. Now, let's go to primary syphilis. And this usually occurs between week three and week four after the person contacts this bacteria. And usually begin with a small round sore called a chanka, and uh, it forms where the bacteria entered the body from. So if you got that through the mouth, then you're going to start getting those around your mouth. If it was the anal opening, you're still going to get those there. If it's the penis or where the entry point was, this is where you'll start getting the sores or the chankas. And uh, it's painless. It doesn't have any pain. And um, it's highly infectious. So in case maybe you so happen to find or meet someone else during this stage, you can easily transmit this to them because now the chunkers are somewhere and they can rupture. So this is what will transmit now the bacteria to the other person. And um, sometimes people may not even notice they have them because they might, for example, it's around your mouth, so you might ju just think that, that I have a HSV due to maybe an ongoing uh, cold or maybe immune is not working well. So you might end up thinking that um, this is not syphilis and it might end up being one. Or maybe sometimes you just get that and because it's painless and maybe it's in an area, maybe your anal region where you're not seeing the area. So you don't actually get to know that you have it until it goes to the extra phases that you see in stage two, three and four. That's when you 
discover that you had it. The sore can remain for two to six weeks and uh, before now going to now the secondary syphilis. And uh, the symptoms cannot be there. Okay, they might not be there, but you might notice that you are having swollen lymph nodes because they are overworking to try to kill this bacteria. If left untreated, primary syphilis will now go to secondary syphilis. You start getting uh, sore throats, and also remember you are, you are having also swollen lymph nodes and uh, skin rashes. This, uh, the rashes will happen on the sole of the feet and also on the palms around this area and also the sole of the feet. And I've seen these photos almost everywhere. Now, I'll try to put some here. Now, uh, the rashes can happen anywhere. And uh, sometimes uh, this can disappear very fast without even you noticing. And uh, sometimes this can be accompanied by other things like headaches, swollen lymph nodes like we mentioned, fatigue, fever, weight loss, hair loss and uh, the aching joints and the hair loss will come if you have the rashes where you have the hair follicles so they start falling off because of them. Now the symptoms will go away whether treatment is received or not. However, without treatment the person will still have syphilis. So if it disappeared after treatment it might be because it disappeared because you are cured. If it disappeared and you didn't treat anything, it means that it's going now to the second phase, which I'm going to see later, and you still have syphilis, you can still transmit, and it's going to go to the pathological side, which is a nasty one. And it's important to know that sometimes syphilis can be mistaken for the condition that really affect the skin, like lichen planus, psoriasis, eczema. So you can mistake you, the, the skin condition for that. If left untreated, secondary syphilis can graduate to latent syphilis. This is the hidden phase where you feel that um, everything, even the symptoms really disappear. So you might feel that uh, maybe you had an infection and uh, your body was able to clear it. So it's still there. It's only that it's hidden and uh, the bad side about this uh, is it can last for really long. So it can even go for years without even you noticing. And this stage is the one that usually progress now to the tertiary once it comes back, so it hides. So, like we mentioned, after the drugs, it can disappear. But if you don't treat it, it will still disappear. But during this phase, it's in the latent phase, where it is just somewhere hiding. And uh, it will just wait for the moment that it will just come back. And uh, it will be now nasty, because now during the tertiary phase, which is now the fourth stage, it's usually... And this is about 14 to 40 percent of people usually get syphilis. They usually get to this tertiary phase. So they usually enter this because of some of the reasons that we mentioned. So it can occur years or decades after the initial infection. And tertiary syphilis can be life-threatening. And before you go to complications, how do you know that you have this infection? So diagnosis. Blood can be taken. We have several tests that can be done in the laboratory to confirm whether you have this disease or uh, a swab for fluorescence can be taken. So still will be taken to the laboratory for something we call fluorescence microscopy. And uh, from there, they can uh, actually see the actual bacteria. It's an interesting looking one. So I'll try to find a photo and attach it here. Also, CSF can be taken through lumbar puncture. So that CSF can be analyzed to see whether you have that disease with you. And also we have home kits that you can use to test at home whether you have the syphilis. Complications that are usually associated with syphilis comes from untreated syphilis and uh, the, the most of them are going to come from uh, the fourth stage where now you're having the devastating effect. Now, gamas, like we said, this is a mass of dead or swollen fiber-like tissue and they are mostly found in the liver, you're going to find them in the liver. They can also occur in the brain, the heart, the skin, bones, eyes and testes. So you're going to have that mass, and uh, this is mostly what usually cause blindness in case it occurs in the eyes. Testes are going to have those complications. In the brain, it's going to cause um, the headaches that will forever be. Brain damage, you have paralysis, you have meningitis. Meningitis is when you have inflammation of the meninges that usually cover your brains. And also damage to the heart valves. They usually damage that in case you have this in your blood. And also we have inflammatory Otic disease. Syphilis can also increase the chances of getting risky pregnancies such as miscarriage, stillbirth, premature birth, and also it can be transmitted, like we mentioned, to the babies. This is what we call congenital syphilis, and this can come with um, other effects like uh, developmental delays. We have seizures, we have rashes, fever, swollen liver, spleen, anemia, jaundice, infectious sores. So there are so many, and that's why during your ANC profile, uh, during your visits, 
to your antenatal clinic, one of the things that usually tested is syphilis because it will have very drastic effect and very unfavorable effects on the babies during the childbirth. So it has to be treated before you give birth. And if this congenital syphilis is left untreated, it can lead to late stage syphilis and this can damage the baby's bones, it can damage the teeth, eyes, ears and brains. Now for the treatment, this is kind of straightforward like we mentioned in gonorrhea because we have antibiotics. Mostly when you're dealing with a bacteria, unless you are dealing with something stable like a mycobacterium for reply and also tuberculosis, uh, most of the bacteria usually have antibiotics that will kill them. So we have antibiotics that will act on them directly, killing them. So this is a cure. So this is the, the good news when it comes to this. One of the most preferred medication when it comes to syphilis is penicillin injection. This is the most effective one. But we have people who are usually allergic to uh, penicillin. So they're usually given doxycycline and a septic free axon. I hope you learned something from this episode. If you did, give us a thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe and uh, ring the bell so that every time we upload something, you get to be notified. You also help the channel by liking and watching the video. So I really appreciate you watching all the up to this point. Until next, or before you even get there, if you have anything, maybe a comment or something, we can continue the conversation down in the comment region. See you in the next video.